This preacher in the background shared a powerful message. I will share the synopsis of this message that is seen on TikTok. You don't want to miss this one. Hear me. Hear me, pastors, preachers. What else do you want? The judgment begins. Shalom family, this is our prophet, prophet Daniel. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. If you are a new viewer to Prophetic Rush TV, click that subscribe button family, post notification bell, like and share for the algorithm of YouTube. Matthew 16, 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the, the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? A pertinent question that is asked by Jesus Christ family I want to share this video that I see on TikTok as this man in the background preaches a effective message about what is going on in the church today as we see the church and social media family what comes to me when I see the church today is a is a compromised church where many of these so-called popular preachers aren't living a holy life and they are disappointing what we know a man of God or a woman of God should be family. I want you to watch this video or this man of God in the background and tell me what to think about this message. Shalom family. One love. You've gotten big churches. Congratulations. People know our names. We've been blessed. What else do you want? You've gotten the fame. You've gotten the people. You've gotten the numbers. You've gotten the money. What else do you want? What are you going for? At some point, you got to stop and realize that judgment begins at the house of God. And God is going to hold preachers accountable for the stuff we do. People in our churches that are dying and going to hell because we're too scared to tell them that a holy God demands a holy people. We've, we've gotten comfortable walking with people that promote everything that the Bible says will send a man or a woman to hell. And we're still trying to walk with them. And we're confusing the people that are seeking after God. It's a dangerous place to be when you figure that God is not enough. Oh, we done got as big as we can get in the church. We want world's kind of clout. We want magazine covers. We want bestsellers. We want to be invited to all of the world's shindigs. But at what cost? Let me, let me, let me, let me. Can I talk to preachers and pastors? I, not long after I became pastor and overseer, a woman called me to a hospital. And I've told y'all this before. She called me to the hospital and she said, when you come, can you bring my communion? Because I wasn't there when we took communion and I, I take that quite seriously, so I did. And when I got there, she asked her family to leave the room. And she said, I really needed you to come out here because I wanted to talk to you. She said, the doctors just gave me some bad news and they, they told me that the treatment stopped working. And the disease came back and it's aggressive and let them tell it I have to make a decision quick because uh, it, it's, it's of the sort that this has become a life and death situation. She said now I called you out here because they told me there's another treatment they could give me. It may work, it may not work. And she said I just wanted you to tell me what should I do? Should I take the treatment or should I just go home to be with the Lord? 
And when that woman said that to me, it's like something hit me in the top of my head and went straight to the bottom of my feet. Because I understood how people value the preacher. It is scary to think that anybody can have that kind of influence in somebody else's life. This woman was willing to live or die based on my word. And you don't realize that people will live or die based on your word. You know what he says through the prophet? He says if you see the enemy approach and you don't sound the alarm and you don't warn the people. And I know what the people say. Well, somebody else will just come along and tell. No, he said they are going to die. They're going to be caught. They're going to die. And their blood. It's going to be on your hands. Pastors and preachers, you got to hear me today. We got to stop playing church. Stop playing with people's souls. Folk are dying and going into eternity every day. And some of them believe that they're okay because of the word of a preacher. You better be careful. I'm telling you what the scripture says. You look in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar came and raided the house of God. Took vessels out of the house of God. And kept them as his spoil. But then Belshazzar comes along. And the Bible says Belshazzar made a dinner to a thousand of his lords. And while he was drinking wine, something convinced him and he said, bring me those vessels that we took out of the house of God. And the Bible says that when he got sacred vessels and poured wine in sacred vessels and drank wine out of that which was sacred and praised the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, and wood. And God said, that's enough. You cannot profane the sacred. The house of God is sacred. You don't profane the sacred. And I'm telling you now, that's when the hand started writing on the wall. And for some people, the hand is already writing on the wall. Don't touch those vessels. We cannot play church. That's why we preach holiness. Because it still means sanctification. It means set apart. Let me say this to you. You will never walk in two different realities. The world will never accept you. They just let you hang around them to keep you from preaching the truth to the rest of the people. But sooner or later, they're going to show you that you were never one of them. Make a mistake and try to stand up for the scriptures and they'll counsel you quicker than a hiccup to let you know you were never one of them. They knew it, you just didn't know it. Look at what we're seeing in, in the world right now. Somebody want to know why they preach holiness? Because of the stuff you're seeing right now. What I want to know, is there anybody left who's dedicated to God? Are there any people left that will say, I am exclusively his. I don't want to walk with the world. I don't want to do what they do. All I want to do for the world is to be an example and to point them in the direction.
direction of real joy, peace, and righteousness. Not playing church. Why come and spend all of this time in the house of God and then die only to hear him say, depart from me. If you gonna come to church, at least get delivered. Get some for all of your time. There are people that are part of all of this stuff that's going on. And you know, you got some preachers, they would love to just sit there and call everybody's name and just, listen, I, I get because the Bible does say you mark them. But you know what I understand? I understand that we're in a spiritual fight. And there are times when, yeah, you got to mark the person. But what I'm focused on is the spirit that's making this possible. Because you can be taught to watch out for a person and then come face to face with that same spirit with a different face. And then you'll end up missing it. But if I teach you to recognize the spirit, then I don't care what kind of face it comes in. You will know it. And you'll be like Paul said, from such, turn away. I'm not going to turn you away from this person and you turn to that person and they operating under the same spirit. No, I got to preach against the spirit. I'm not trying to get up here and blast everybody, call everybody's name. I ain't got time for that. Hey Amen. This is a spiritual warfare and our weapons are not carnal. There are times when you have to mark them, but I want you to recognize the spirit. So if it comes with a different face, you can still know this ain't God. 